Hey, good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody? Good afternoon. Hey, how are you? Uh, hi. Um, okay, it looks like something is wrong again. Um, okay, let me, that, that's the audio, I guess. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let me go back to my audio setting and let's see the output. Oh, uh, I should be headphone. And then input. Uh, microphone, yeah, okay. If it isn't microphone, what else can it be? Should it be? A... All right, can you guys hear me? Hello, can you hear yes. me? Yes, okay. we can hear you. Okay, so input and output settings are correct. Good. Um, all righty. Finally, today, today is finally the, la finally the last day. Uh, uh, that last day has come, finally. And um, so uh, it's our last topic today, which is depreciation. So uh, let me pull up. Uh, yeah, it's here. Um, so, um, um, something we need to uh, know about depreciation, um, uh, because most of the times depreciation is easily, you know, just uh, in passing. They all in accounting, especially in accounting classes, they say, you know, uh, it reflects the uh, decreasing value of the fixed assets. Yes, that's that's. That's his uh, obvious definition, but you know, uh, I don't think they hardly tell uh, the more important reason behind it. So uh, it's mainly about you know uh, uh, tax. So um, let's take a look at the uh, the two purposes of uh, depreciation. So first of all, non-current assets. In other words, the uh, fixed assets. All fixed assets must be de must depreciate over time due to wear and tear. We understand that. Uh, we've been talking about that already. Uh, everything wears and tears with usage and you know with age, right? So then the aging lowers the efficiency. Aging lowers the efficiency, efficiency and the productivity of plant and equipment. So. Um, the value of the aged, worn, and torn assets must go down. That you know, that goes without saying. Uh, and that part that is worn and torn, uh, but uh, must be uh, replaced, right? The, so depreciation requires new investment to replace part or whole of the depreciated asset to maintain. Uh, at least uh, greater than or at least equal to constant capacity, constant production capacity. So depreciation follows, therefore, actually, you know, um, depreciation doesn't re reflect reality. I emphasize this, uh, you know, uh, a couple of times. It follows the artificial schedule or artificial timeline. So first thing, uh, Service life of an asset is predetermined, right? So suppose uh, your company vehicle, let's assume uh, we're talking about your company vehicle. I've been telling you, your personal vehicle uh, depreciates naturally. In other words, if you've been taking very good care of your personal vehicle car, and if you have low mileage on that you know, uh, car, then the depreciation would relatively be, you know, uh, uh, less. And when you resell it, uh, you would get a good value on it. So that's natural, not artificial. But the uh, business assets are depreciated by artificial schedules. So regardless, regardless of how uh, 
how little it was used. Think about it. If, if it wasn't used very much, you know, uh, very often, then it won't be worn and torn. You won't see the uh, uh, any uh, uh, hint of age or, you know. Um, but, you know, uh, regardless of the actual uh, state of the uh, uh, actual condition of the uh, uh, physical assets, right, they just follow the artificial schedule. So uh, let's say, you know, five years later, everything must be like, you know, right? Uh, completely depreciated. Uh, the value of the asset would be nothing but scrap metal value or zero dollars. You know? So it's totally artificial. And this, um, and service life is already predetermined, right? Uh, doesn't reflect actual usage, wear and tear, or resale value. All fixed assets are assumed to have been fully depreciated, that means expired or disintegrated, right? Disintegrated to dust. Uh, the reality isn't like that, right? If you have uh, some fixed asset after the serve, you know, um, a number of years, you know, you have used them, uh, you have used it well, you know, still there would be some value on it, right? Company vehicle, even after five years, there would be some resale value on it. Uh, but according uh, the in the uh, uh, depreciation of uh, business assets, it's artificial. Five years later, the company vehicle would uh, uh, will have been uh, completely disintegrated. Uh, so it's been really, really, really used to its full extent, right? Assumed to have been used uh, full extent, and um, so. Uh, uh, so, uh, it fully depreciated or depreciated to salvage value. Salvage value is some scrap metal value, pre, you know, pre-assigned. At uh, uppercase T, you know uppercase T means, you know, uh, a terminal time. Uh, terminal time means, you know, that's the end of the service life. So, if, you, uh, if the asset has lived out its service life, uh, it should turn into a... Uh, 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 nothing but scrap metal, right? You can consider that, you can compare it to your shoes. I mean, if you have a pair of shoes and if they have been well used, right? If, it, if the pair of shoes have been well used, what would it turn to? It would turn into nothing but, nothing but a, a, a rag, right? It would turn in... Uh, and that's for a shoes, for a pair of shoes. That's a, that's a life well lived, isn't it? Right? It served its pur purpose and uh, expired. But if your shoes are still like in mint condition, in uh, even in twenty years, uh, yeah, I have some pair of boots that I bought like twenty years ago and <laughs> haven't even put them on. <laughs> they are still new. But then you know. Uh, they haven't lived out a service. I mean, you know, for a personal asset, uh, for a personal asset, that's that's important. But for business asset, if it is still in mint condition, uh, uh, it may be in reality, but on the book, on the book, it should have expired. It should have, you know, just like the pair of shoes that have well served its purpose, right? A pair of shoes which have well served uh, which has well served its uh, purpose, must have turned into nothing but, right? Uh, what do you call that? You know, uh, a, a rag, a rag tag, or, you know, uh, it should have completely turned into a uh, uh, ragged uh, something. So, uh, that's why the uh, depreciation is artificial. Um, and the uh, uh, depreciation so appears in the uh, balance sheet, right? In the uh, fixed asset side, because you have seen uh, after adding up the fixed asset values, right? And then you need to subtract 
depreciation, right? But it also appears in the income statement. Depreciation also appears in the income statement as, as a line item in OPEX, right? So uh, in this case, uh, you are assuming that the asset is paid as you go for its usage, right? Uh, whereas asset may have been paid in full already at time zero. Now think about it. Um, yeah, if you are renting, for example, um, if you're renting the asset, you pay as you go, right? If you're renting, but most of the times, you know, uh, uh, in manufacturing, you can't rent a production equipment, right? The production equipment, uh, is something that is tailored, tailored towards your own, you know, uh, 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 you know, specification of your products, right? I mean, you cannot uh, the mold for the mold for uh, iPhone 13 cannot be the same mold as you know, uh, Galaxy 13, right? All equipments must be uh, tailored to its own specification. So uh, it's hard to rent production equipment. You know, you have to own it, right? Uh, so um, although um, if the full, uh, although it is already paid fully, you know, a uh, full amount has been paid at time zero, right? But uh, that is recognized full payment uh, as if that that is you know, paid uh, uh, gradually in installment, right? Over time, over the service life of the asset, just like, you know, uh, uh, pay as you rent, right? Pay as you go in case of rental. Um, if full payment is recognized at time zero, the full cost of the asset will be written off as expense at time one. And then uh, it will lower the earning, um, earnings before taxes, right, taxable income, by as much as the asset's value. And that will lower tax, uh, that will low, lower uh, taxes. And then IRS will have difficulty forecasting revenue stream as firms as firms purchase assets at any time, right, without prior notice to IRS. I mean, it's not like uh, companies are purchasing assets uh, with the approval, only upon the approval of IRS, they will just purchase it any time they want. And no government, uh, I mean, this is not a, uh, 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 in a free market economy, any business, right, anybody can buy anything at the time of their own choosing, right? Uh, so then, you know, it makes uh, the job of IRS very difficult. Too many unexpected dips and spikes in the IRS revenue stream. Think about it, right? Without IRS knowing, right, uh, if there are like 50,000 companies in the US, there will be more, uh, probably, you know, uh, 5 million, you know, big and small. Uh, if all of these companies, you know, uh, uh, want, wants to write off, if all of these companies want to write off uh, the full cost of the asset at time zero, right, then IRS will have, you know, uh, 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 so much difficulty because there's so many unexpected uh, dips and spikes in the uh, IRS, IRS's revenue stream. So IRS wants you to smooth it out, right? Smooth out these ex uh, uh, expenses uh, uh, spread over time. So that's why, you know, artificial and planned depreciation solves the problem. Firms depreciate over asset service life. So don't get one in that way. They won't get one big tax break in the first year, but several small ones over the next uh, several years, over the life of the uh, 
uh, service life of the asset. And firm, however, firms prefer writing off expenses ASAP. If possible, they want to write off that expense in the first year. Why? Because then that will give them a big tax break, right? So um, that will lead to accelerated depreciation because in depreciation, there are two, uh, two large categories of techniques. One is called straight line depreciation. The other one is accelerated uh, depreciation, okay? So uh, there's some terminologies we need to uh, uh, take a look. Uh, so uh, first, purchase cost or just cost, cost of the asset, right? That's the purchase cost of the asset, uh, which is book value at time zero. That will be the, uh, if you, if the company buys a BMW, right, for $50,000, it will enter the book, right, as $50,000 at the time of the purchase, right, which is, you know, time zero. So book value at time, so purchase cost is, uh, you know, uh, book value at time zero, okay? Now, here I just wanted to uh, um, uh, mention uh, some one thing, you know, as I was, a lot of people submitted homework four in a rush, just uh, like, you know, last, last night, right? Pretty much all the uh, homework four came in, uh, or at least about, you know, 80% uh, of the homework came in, or 80 to 70% of the homework came in within the, uh, like, you know, uh, evening hours, you know, between like 6 p.m. and 12 midnight yesterday. I, so I could I couldn't go over any of those, but you know I I went over a couple of like three homeworks that came in before you know, and uh, some people still um, can't make distinction between price and cost. Someone even wrote co price cost cost price. What's cost price? I mean the cost. It's cost price is like a uh, uh, oxymoron, right? You understand? Because it's like a uh, uh, round square. Is there a round square? Is there something like a round square or round triangle? Huh? Or a uh, is there a uh, uh, is something like saying defeated winner? Or defeated champ? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, a former champion who got defeated. That makes sense. That, but you know, a uh, current champion that's defeated. I mean, you know, uh, how can you be a champion if you're defeated, right? In the uh, uh, in the current match, or you know, um, uh, those are oxymorons. You understand? Those are oxymorons. They don't, you know, simply, you know, contradictory. They don't make, so price cost or cost price is also an oxymoron. But if you just think, if you have, you know, a sensible mind would know something's wrong with that. You can't have a, you know, you can't have a word like price cost. Or cost price, you know, that doesn't, but, you know, some people, I don't know how that can happen, you know. The only, the only reason, the only way it can happen is because people don't think. If you don't think, you know, something like that comes up. So, um, so, uh, cost means purchase cost, right? At, you know, so book value at time zero. And salvage value, salvage value is the uh, uh, value at uh, terminal time, book value at terminal time after full depreciation. So salvage value would be either $0 or scrap metal value. The depreciation base is the, uh, uh, the amount that gets depreciated. So that's basically a cost minus salvage value. Okay? So... If the salvage value is zero, the full 
full asset uh, book value as zero or purchase cost is depreciated. Now service life or just life is just expressed in the number of years or maximum production units or maximum output level. So after, now uh, you understand that they express service life in either years or uh, output units, especially if you buy a bulb, right? Light bulb, you know, it will say uh, how many hours it can light up, right? So that's like, you know, production uh, quantity, it's in quantity, right? Um, also, you know, uh, when you buy a car, right? Then, you know, warranty, uh, they express warranty period, warranty uh, period, either by mileage or year, whichever comes first. And think about it. Uh, most of, you know, um, most of the uh, car manufacturers would give five year warranty period, five year, or 50,000 miles. Some, some, I, you know, uh, Hyundai, uh, I don't know if Kia does that too, uh, those South Korean car makers, uh, they have 10 year, 100,000 miles warranty. They can be either in years, but think about it, whichever comes first, right? But uh, if, you, if you bought a car, but you, ha you hardly drive, you, you, you don't even put, you know, 1,000 miles a year, Right? But then, you know, the warranty period is five years because five years will come first, right? Because before you hit, you know, uh, 50,000 miles, if you don't even put 1,000 miles a year, then in five years, it will be only 5,000 miles, right? For, uh, for your odometer reading to you know, for your odometer to read, you know, 50,000 miles, it will take 10 years. So, uh, right? Uh, but if it is Hyundai or Kia, then, uh, yeah, even in 10 years, you know, uh, 50,000, uh, 100,000 miles in 10 years, I mean, you know, you can still get warranty. Um, and the depreciation rate, that, that means, you know, uh, uh, the percentage of you know depreciation, of course, then it will be one divided by one over life, service life. Why? Uh, if the service life is five years, then each year it will be 20% uh, each year, right? One over five, right? So the annual depreciation is either depreciation base divided by service life or uh, Depreciation base times de depreciation rate. It goes without saying. If your asset value is $100,000 and salvage value is zero, then the depreciation base is $100,000, right? And then if the service life is five years, then each year it is artificially, as, as I said, it's artificial. It doesn't really depend. It has nothing to do with the actual natural uh, depreciation. It's artificial annually. Uh, straightforward 20 percent is depreciated annual and accumulated the accumulated depreciation is sum of all the annual depreciations book value this book value means you know uh, remaining book value right book value at the end of year one at the end of year two at the end of year three and so on that book value is purchase cost minus accumulated depreciation yeah goes without saying. I mean, you know, three years later, right, the book value will have to be purchase cost minus accumulated depreciation for three years. And then that, you know, uh, uh, then from this, you can also uh, come to uh, accumulated depreciation can be also, you know, then it's going to be cost minus book value. And then what is the cost? Cost is accumulated depreciation plus book value, I mean, you know, it's just like if uh, 
if 1 is 3 minus 2, then what is 2? 3 minus 1, and what is 3? 2 plus 1, right? It's not a, you know, a difficult thing. So we're going to, uh, 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 once, you know, the basic concepts have been established, now we're going to uh, take a look at uh, the actual uh, example. We're going to do the actual example. And I want everyone to uh, open. Okay. Let's see how many people are. Uh, I want you to open that Excel file. I see 10 people are here in the collaborate. 10. All right. So let me check how many people are in. Yeah, 10. So it's very tight. I mean, this class is very tight. Every every day, you know, I mean, at, at the beginning, we had like 15 people. And it was even, both in Collaborate and in uh, Forum. So uh, that means, you know, uh, and now we are either, you know, 10 or 12, you know, still very, you know, uh, even numbers, you know, even both in, you know, Collaborate and so that means this is a very solid traction or solid following of. Uh, so uh, everyone is, you know, uh, everyone here is very serious about this. Uh, although I can't, you know, really verify uh, if people are really, you know, uh, into this, into this lecture or just, you know, logged in and away. Uh, that cannot be verified, but at least, you know, I seems like, you know, I have a very good uh, uh, faithful group, right? A sincere and faithful group of students. All righty. So, um, uh, and what I was, you know, as I was saying, um, uh, this Excel file, please open that. And I have opened it here. Uh, let's you know, accelerate the straight, straight line depreciation. So here are these examples. Uh -oh. It's not a difficult one. I mean, you know, um, <clears throat> this one is just to show, uh, just to show you that it can be uh, the layout can be like this or the layout can be like this, okay? It doesn't really matter. But let me, you know, uh, uh, let me do the, uh, Okay, so um, we're not, uh, I'll just give you a simple, uh, let's do this. Uh, first of all, um, what is depreciation base? Depreciation base is the, oh, okay, it's still, uh, depreciation base is cost minus salvage value, right? There you go. Okay. And service life is four years. So annual depreciation will be depreciation uh, base divided by life. Okay. So annual depreciation will be uh, $2,000. Okay. With that in mind, let's try this. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, uh, let's try this. This time, uh, purchase cost is 10000 salvage value 1000 That's a lot of salvage value. I guess no matter what, salvage value would not be more than probably, you know, uh, $200. If it is a $10,000 asset, even if it turns into scrap metal, I don't know if it's going to be even $200. Let's, let's make it, you know, what would be a $10,000 asset? Even a good computer is ten thousand dollars, right? Um, so I'll make it, you know, uh, 
$100. Scrap metal value, $100. Life, three years. So this time, uh, let's do it this way. I'm going to move this. Uh, I'm going to move this aside. And then put rate first. Uh, okay. And I, I, okay, there were all right. That way, um, I can calculate the depreciation rate first, and simply multiply that to the uh, uh, depreciation base. Okay. So here, um, one over service life. And since uh, this cell is already formatted as percentage, right? I've been telling you, uh, I still noticed in the uh, noticed in the homework that you don't, you know, uh, uh, you don't use, you know, um, that you are still using, you know, uh, you're still rounding up. You still let the uh, Excel round up. I've been telling you to use two to three decimal places by default, right? But you might wonder why, you know, what? It makes a difference because in this case, uh, it is 33.33. If you let it round it, it will come to 33%. But then if it is 20, uh, uh, if it is 32.51, 32.51, what will, what will, uh, what is it going to be rounded to if it is 32.51? Hmm? What is it if it is rounded? If 32.51 is rounded to, what is it? No one? You can't even tell what 32.51 will be rounded to? Could it be four? No, 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 32.51. Oh, th hmm? thir so 30. Uh, where are you 30, 33? 33, yeah. Who said 33? Who said 33? Shirley. Shirley, yeah. Okay, Shirley, you got, you know, um, uh, 0 0.5. Yeah, and also think about it. 33, then 33.49, 33 33.49, what's it going to be rounded to? 33.49. 33 33.5? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Listen. Wouldn't it just be 33? Yes, yes. Who said 33? It'll be 33. That was Tatiana. Tatiana, yes, Tatiana. So Tatiana, you got also uh, 0 0.5. Yes, think about it. If it is rounded, I'm talking about rounding to integer, right? If it is 33.49, it is rounded to 33, right? As an integer, right? Then think about it. Between, I'm, t I'm talking about the uh, importance of, you know, using at least two to three decimal places. And think about it. If you don't use two to three decimal places, uh, like, you know, but you use, you know, you let it round it to integer. Between, think about it, between 33.49 and 32.51, the difference is almost one. Isn't that right? Between 33.49 and 32. 2.51, the difference is almost 1. But if you leave it around it, they both become 33. And that's a big difference, right? Difference of almost, you know, one whole number. That's a big difference. That's something you have to be very, uh, you know, uh, conscious about. That's why I'm emphasizing always, you know, uh, using at least two to three decimal places. Because the difference of 1% is, uh, you know, uh, uh, significant, right? 
All right, so uh, uh, today, 22, right? Uh, now, so then we know already, you know, uh, uh, annually is going to be like 33.33. So all you need to do is now this time, uh, I don't have depreciation base uh, column. So doesn't matter. We'll just, by definition, depreciation base is cost minus salvage value, then times the depreciation rate. So annually it's going to be 3,300, right? And then, so we, uh, then we build depreciation schedule and depreciation schedule is really, really, you know, uh, simple. Uh, if it is, a, so it's a three year asset, annually it's going to be like this and you're going to lock it because you're going to, you'll have to lock it because that's, you know, I'm going to drag it down, right? Lock and then so you need to do this with me, right? I drag it down. So every year it's going to be like that. And then that's accumulated depreciation. Cumulative or accumulated, that means the same thing. Accumulated depreciation. So, which is, you know, in the first year, it's just itself. Right? But in the second year, it's the sum of these two. This and this. Think about it. Two years later, accumulated depreciation must be six thousand six hundred, and then from there, from then on, you can drag it down. Right? And then the book value. Book value is what? Always purchase cost minus accumulated depreciation. So I'm gonna lock this to B thirteen must be locked because it's always, you know, uh, it's going to be repeated. You're going to lock it, hit enter, and you drag it down. Okay. And then finally, uh, in the final year, uh, the, the book value in the last year must be exactly the salvage value. And it's salvage value. So, uh, it checks out. This is, you know, a uh, immaculate. Uh, okay, so uh, I want uh, think about it. This is not nice because um, as I dragged it down, the border lines uh, uh, got added, and the bottom border line is gone. So what I'm going to do is I will remove the border line there and put a new, okay, thick border line. And I've been telling over and over uh, in the in the homework, my comment, if you didn't put borderline, I always put it said in the, in the comment box, I put put a thick borderline. Hmm. That looks more professional, right? Now, next. So we'll do this just like... Uh, this time I'm gonna I'm gonna I, 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 um, I have a question. Sit down. Yeah. How yeah. do you how do you know when it's acting for the salvage value in the question? The question will already say the salvage value is something. If the question doesn't say anything about the sales value, then it's zero. Okay? Okay. If it doesn't say anything about the sales value, then it's assumed to be zero. Sales value is zero. In other words, you are fully depreciating. Okay? Okay, now this time, let's do it this way. Professor, is the is the residual value the same as the salvage value? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Residual value means the, oh. exactly the uh, salvage value. Okay, so then all right. What does that? What does residual mean? You know what residual means? You know, uh, literally residual. You know what's left over, right? Actually, you know, in in uh, statistics, residual means error. Uh, but you know, uh, we know what you know. Uh, uh, 
after de fully depreciating whatever is left, that's residual value. And this time I'm gonna change that to our name is depreciation base. So this time, let's do it this way, okay? Depreciation base is the, you know, uh, sales value, that, that's, uh, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna change that later. And minus that. Now, $2,000 sales value is unlikely for a $14,000 asset, maybe, you know, at best 200, okay, at best 200. That's, that wasn't realistic. Think about it, $14,000 asset would be what? Probably a file cabinet, right? Uh, a nice file cabinet or maybe not a file cabinet, but something like a, uh, uh, a used car, right? Used car. And then probably sells value, uh, maybe even a, a copier, a very you know, good copier. Copy machine, you know, cop, copier and you know, um, printer, you know, copy. and it sells value at best two hundred dollars. And the service life is four years. If the service life is four years, you know, depreciation base is already there. You know, calculated rate, depreciation rate is one over service life. Then the depreciation amount each year, it will be like this. Then, yeah, each year it's gonna be like this, amount is like this. So uh, all of this is wrong because that was previously, it was pointing to um, a different cell. So now, Again, annual depreciation, then it should be like this. And then you lock it, okay? Hit F4 and lock it. And then you can drag it down. And then accumulated depreciation, we know it is this in the first year, only that. From the second year, it's the sum of the... Uh, and you can drag it down. Uh, book value, always the purchase cost minus. Uh, so always, when you say always, then, oh, you need to lock this one, right? Minus accumulated depreciation, right? cumulative appreciation, and you drag it down. And the final year, final book value is the same thing as the sales value then. Uh, it's correct, right? Again, I don't have time to uh, do the, uh, 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 to make it neat, but housekeeping, don't forget, don't forget uh, the housekeeping. You gotta make it neat like this. So uh, I'm not gonna do more uh, examples here, but uh, move on to, uh, there's an example of partial depreciation. Where is the, uh, I think this is the partial. Uh, which one was the partial depreciation? Um, so, so here, let's take a look at the. Uh, uh, so far, we've been assuming that the asset was purchased at time zero, in other words, January 1st of that year, and held until uh, the end of the December 31st of the uh, last year. In other words, it was, it's been assumed that the asset was held for full year every year. But that's not necessarily the case because think about it, nobody buys assets exactly on the first day of January of, you know, right? So um, 
And here's the example. Uh, if purchased in April, right, uh, then the asset is not owned for a full year in year one. Now, what do you do? Um, in year one, of course, you have to make that adjustment. Uh, because then if it was purchased on April 1st, then, you know, uh, the asset is held only for three quarters of a year, right? So we make that adjustment. In the second year, it's okay. Just the full year. Third year, you will need to uh, uh, make adjustment for that missing one, uh, one quarter in the first year. So in other words, in the last year, you make uh, adjustment for that. So it will be uh, that way uh, you end up with the uh, uh, salvage value. If you don't do that, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not a good, you know, uh, uh, correct depreciation. And think about it. The reason it is called, you know, straight line depreciation is because it, they make straight line. Book value, uh, look at this example, $10,000 asset. Uh, if the sales value is like that, you know, um, uh, three years, right? At the end of year one, I mean, if we start from time zero, right? Of course, the, we will have, you know, uh, uh, if we start from time zero, we'll have 10,000 here. And then if you uh, connect those bars, it makes straight line, right? Right? Accumulated depreciation also makes straight line, right? Uh, Okay, so um, let's do the uh, let's use that assumption. Uh, uh, April purchase, and then uh, I think this is that example. Maybe yeah, uh, life three years. Mm, I'm gonna switch this. Is this this? Uh oh. Okay, and if um, so, that scenario is not fully um, reflected. So what do I do? I will build a small uh, separate table, right? Called, you know, uh, like um, This will make that adjustment, right? So in the first year, right? Uh, it was held, uh, so I'm gonna, let me, uh, it's very slow. And this is also the point I was making over and over. You don't, you don't manually input, I mean, to make adjustment, you will, ma you know, uh, you may, you will think of just manually inputting, you know, uh, multiplying by three quarters. Don't do it. Ma don't manually input that. Because it, um, if you manually input it, it can be used only once, right? It cannot be used, uh, repeat, uh, reused repeatedly. And I don't, I don't like that. Um, it needs to be, if you're using a, uh, 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 if you 
are solving a problem by a program. Program needs to be like a program. In other words, by, by program, it should automatically, do, that means, Ah. Okay, I should have done well just as some ordinary year, but again, you don't even you might think, oh so I'll divide it by three six. Don't don't enter it like that. What if it is not so I will, uh, I will, uh, let's say, put any, temporarily put any cell there and uh, I will uh, make a separate table next to it, your type. Three sixty. So if it is not ordinary year, I mean, we can handle it by, you know, uh, simply by changing that to 365 if it is exact year, right? And then all I need to do is this minus this divided by this. Okay. Anyway, um, Then uh, in the first year, we make adjustment for that. You know, that uh, first of all, uh, oh, okay, uh, to do that, we will need to uh, first do this one over. And use two decimal places, always. And the depreciation amount, annual depreciation. Depreciation base, which is cost minus times depreciation rate, or which is simply the same thing as divided by life. Okay, but in the first, so I'm gonna first put this and put you know dollar sign and drag it down. But in the first year, I will need to make uh, okay, let's do this. You know, adjustment can be made later. So uh, in the first year, it's just the self. Eh, eh, never mind. Uh, I'll I'll make adjustment first. So in the first year, it's just. Uh, this fact. Okay. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, one minus. Now think about it. One minus that. Why? Uh, think about it. Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, I got it. Uh, I got it. Okay, that's correct. Because this is already, you know, uh, one, uh, uh, this is T1 minus T0, right? T1 minus T0. In other words, that's, you know, uh, uh, one third of a year. I, I mean, uh, uh, three, three quarters of a year, three quarters of a year, right? from April to uh, December. And that was the uh, time uh, 
That was the holding period of this asset in the first year. And uh, book value is always, you know, uh, purchase cost <coughs> minus uh, accumulated depreciation. And now you can drag it down. Uh, both. You can drag it down. But then, uh, oh, I didn't. I forgot to do this. B41 and Okay, so I should have done little by little. I drag it down. Ah, drag it down. Come on. Okay. But then the problem is then uh, you don't end up with the salvage value. So uh, what do we what was wrong? Uh, we needed to make adjustment in the last year because uh, what what was missing in the first year, right? Um, that needed to be added here. So uh, what was missing? So in other words, uh, in the last year, we are uh, depreciating the uh, five quarters, right? Not four quarters. Uh, the annual is like that. So times. Uh, one plus then uh, one minus this. Okay. Then that will give, you know, uh, uh, think about it. F36, that's annual depreciation times one, that's going to give you whole year, full year depreciation, right? Uh, plus one minus this. That will give one fourth, right? One fourth of a year, right? The first quarter. So you are adding it back in there. There you go. And then finally, you end up with the salvage value, right? So It checks out, okay? So um, that's basically uh, how you do it for partial year, right? Uh, I, well, I don't know if this, uh, I should have put partial year, uh, okay, so. Oh yeah, yeah, here, it says partial year. So this was the example for partial year. Ah, uh, I just didn't, Ah, it says depreciation schedule with partial year. So I should have done, I should have done it there. I should have done it. Uh, but you know, uh, I can move. I can move it here, and then I should have done it. Like you know. Uh, times this, <laughs> and here I should have again made that adjustment. There you go. And how do you know if, it, if you did it right? I, I, you know, as long as you see the same uh, the final year's uh, last or final year book value at the end. If the book value at the end is exactly the sales value, then you got it right. Professor, okay. I have a question. Yeah. For, yeah. for um, the straight line depreciation, are you supposed to always get the, um, the savage value toward the end? Yeah, yeah, of course. Not only, not only for straight line, but also for accelerated depreciation as well, you should get the uh, the you know uh, uh, 
the state is salvage value. Otherwise, it's not fully depreciated. Otherwise, it's very sloppy. The book is very sloppy about that. Okay. Right. And so uh, it's, a, it's a matter of making adjustment, right? It's a matter of making adjustment. Uh, so it's all, you know, uh, uh, and if, if the salvage value is zero, right, you know, you, you know, you should end up with zero. Any other numbers, then that's not right, right? I mean, it's sloppy, right? Nobody will say, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, you deserve punishment for this, or you go to jail because you know uh, your depreciation uh, was sloppy. Uh, nobody, will, <laughs> it's just sloppy. You know, obviously, it will. It just doesn't look good on you. It doesn't reflect positively on you if your depreciation is sloppy, right? Anything sloppy won't look, you know, uh, you know, positive. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, if if it is like, you know, uh, very tight, you know, this is very, you know, uh, uh, partial year, you know, uh, it's well adjusted for partial year. Now, uh, next example. Can I say something? I feel like what I'm confused a lot of, well, myself, is that the value, I started with the value instead of finding the amount and then putting the amount as the first for the beginning value. And then I depreciated everything else. What do you mean value? Book value? Um, the savage value. I use that as the beginning. Um, no, no, no. What, what do you mean savage? You, no, you talking, use this as the beginning? I'm, I'm, if you go up, like, for example, um, for savage value right here where it says cost is 1250 then it says savage value is 50 I put for the first, oh, well, you went up. Yeah, down. I put for the first mm -hmm. year, I would have put 50 I you mean it. here? You, you put you're putting fifty here? Yeah, instead of finding the amount. Yeah. So that's what I messed up once I'm doing it now as we speak. Look, sal salvage means you know uh, literally salvage means you know when when the asset is you know uh, when the asset is you know completely worn and torn, right? Then that's salvage. I mean you know uh, nobody salvages a new car. Nobody values new car at a salvage value. Isn't that right? Literally, that's what it means. Salvage means, you know, it's dead. It's expired. It's it's a junk. And if you salvage anything from it, that's the salvage from the junk, you know, uh, right? Uh, you can salvage some parts, right? Generator, you know, alternator, generator, or whatever, you know, uh, some, you know, good tires, you know, if, if the tire is still good. Um, that's what salvage means. You don't put, you cannot get confused, you know, uh, but simply by the, the word salvage, by the definition of the word salvage, it doesn't belong in the first year, right? And then um, finally, um, uh, service life, as I told you, service life is not necessarily always in years. It can be in output level. As I said, you know, uh, 10,000, I mean, you know, uh, 10 years or 100,000 miles for warranty period. Or, you know, if you buy a light bulb, you know, light bulb says, you know, uh, um, uh, 10,000 hours, you know. But of course, if you don't use it constantly, if you keep, if you keep using it, right, if you turn on the light all the time, if you keep the light turned on all the time, constantly and continuously, then it will burn out after 10,000 hours. But if you uh, uh, use it sporadically, I mean, you know, uh, uh, five hours today, you know, uh, uh, six hours tomorrow, uh, seven hours yesterday, I mean, if it is, you know, uh, not, uh, then it may last until you use completely, you know, uh, uh, use it for uh, 10,000 hours in total, right? So in other words, just like that, uh, the asset can be, uh, asset service life can be uh, expressed in uh, quantity, the maximum output level, right? So, the purchase cost of this asset was 75,000, sales value 5,000, 
again, uh, oops, the sales value is too much. I mean, you know, uh, uh, maybe, you know, 500 would be a good. And if it, that means if it produces 350,000 units, right? If this, this machine produces 350,000 units, then, uh, then it, it is fully depreciated. That's what it means. So again, uh, I'm gonna move this around a little. I mean, it's, it's more natural to have uh, rate, okay, before amount. So then in this case, the uh, rate, depreciation rate is per unit rate. How, what, you know, percentage is depre depreciated uh, for each unit it produces, right? And of course, it's always, you know, one over life, service life. You hit enter. Uh, that's basically, you know, the depreciation rate. Then um, in dollars, in dollars, it's going to be, you know, uh, cost minus salvage value, which is an all uh, base, depreciation base, times depreciation rate. And there you go, that's 21 cents. Then in the first year, it produced 15,000, uh, uh, 150,000 units. Then this times, and that's, that will have to be locked because as you drag it down, it will still have to be locked and that, okay? And then you drag it down. An accumulated depreciation is in the first year, it's just itself. In the second year, it's the sum of second year depreciation and first year accumulated depreciation. And you drag it down. Book value, don't forget, you know, uh, it's always purchase cost and lock it minus accumulated depreciation. Something, not right. Uh, let me take a look at B. There is no such thing as 515. So, there you go. And then we drag it down. Let's see if we end up with a salvage value. Yeah, we ended up with exactly with a salvage value. And let's see, I mean, what is the sum or the total of the output for four years. This may not, this may or may not be equal to uh, life, service life. I mean, in four years, you may have reached the service life or may not. So it doesn't matter. Uh, just, you know, just for fun, I want to find out if you auto sum. Okay. In, in this example, in particular, in this particular example, uh, in four years, uh, the machine has completely lived out its life, service life. In other words, it's fully depreciated. And that's what is meant by this 500, right? At the end of year four, right? Uh, it turned into only scrap metal, right? The, it's fully depreciated and ended up with the uh, salvage value. And that's, you know, uh, that's why, and that means, you know, uh, uh, all, all of these production levels, output levels uh, for the last four years uh, added up to uh, its service life. But if, uh, think about it, but if this wasn't, if this wasn't exactly, uh, if this didn't add up to service life, you cannot, you cannot end up with salvage value because if it, if these numbers don't add up to service life, that means it still has service life left, right? It still has service life left. 
So you cannot end up with self's value if that's the case. Make sense? All right. So uh, uh, now that, that that takes you know that leaves us you know to the <laughs> right point to take a break. Uh, and let's take a, a ten minute break. And when, you know when we come back, we'll go into uh, uh, up, uh, accelerate depreciation. Okay. All righty. So let's take a ten minute.
All right, we're back. We're back. And um, so we are now moving on to the uh, accelerated depreciation. Okay. So uh, the next uh, the next worksheet is um, in accelerated depreciation, um, there are largely two uh, techniques or two methods. One is the uh, sum of the digits method, sum of the digits method. And uh, the other one is declining balance method, declining balance method. Okay. Um, the third one, actually, I said two large, you know, uh, techniques, uh, but there is actually a third one. But the third one is not really, I wouldn't say third one is, because third one is not mathematical. Third one is called, you know, uh, uh, accelerated uh, cost recovery system. Um, or then there is modified MACRS, uh, modified accelerated cost. This um, is not really any, um, okay, so I guess I should. Uh, it's not mathematical method. It's just you know, following, you know, a predetermined, you know, pr uh, prescribed uh, ratios, uh, prescribed um, uh, rates. So uh, first, some of the years digits, some of the years digits method is um, basically a uh, it's also called the rule of 78, rule of 78. It's the same thing as rule of 78. Why, why it's called rule of 78? I'm going to explain later. But first, <clears throat> for example, if the service life is five years, right? Uh, in this method, what they do is first find the uh, sum of all those numbers, sum of all those digits, right? Years digits, right? And that will come to a 15, of course, here, you know, uh, I used. Um, and I even inversed those digits, right? Inverse the, uh, the order of those digits. Now think about it. If this is straight line depreciation, we know each year is going to be 20%. Depreciation rate will be 20%. But here, uh, in the, uh, and every year it's 20%, but uh, in the in this method, first year is 33%. Let me use you know because uh, I always emphasize this. Let me use two decimal places. In the first year is 33%. Second year, uh, 26. Third year, 20. In other words, you see it is declining. Early on, it's uh, you are depreciating depreciating the most and over the years is declining. Depreciation rate is uh, declining, right? Uh, so what's the benefit? You depreciate lo larger amount uh, early on. Uh, in other words, you write off, you write off the expense, most expense, uh, you write, write off the largest expense, early on and it is smoothly declining right over time and so the benefit is clear right uh, the more you write off uh, the more tax break you get early on the more you write off early on the more tax break you get early on right and more tax bracket is uh, more tax bracket early on is important. You might think, uh, I mean, isn't it, isn't it anyway the same thing, you know, whether it is straight line depreciation or accelerated depreciation? Anyway, uh, even if it is 20% every year for the five years, you still get 100%. Uh, you write off 100% anyway over five years. Huh? Uh, so what's the difference? Hmm? Still in accelerated depreciation, still, you know, over five years, it's going to be uh, 100% anyway. Uh, so 
uh, what's the difference? If you studied, if you studied finance, I mean, you did you did finance early on, right? Um, when you know time value of money, right? Uh, and what is the uh, biggest concept in time value of money? Present value, right? Present value. Uh, future cash flows need to be discounted because future cash flows are uh, cannot be uh, you know taken at its fu uh, face value because it's in the future. Future uh, one thousand dollars ten years from now cannot be equal to one thousand dollars today. You understand why? Because you know that's time value, right? Always present value is more important. I mean, today's $1,000 is more valuable than $10,000 10 years from now, right? Makes sense. So then think about it. You can get tax break for the next five years, right? You can get like 20% tax break uh, each year for the next five years. Or you can get like, you know, uh, uh, this way, tax break like this over the next five years. Which one is better? Definitely this one is better. Why? Because you, you have more present value today. In other words, you know, uh, uh, the present value of all that tax break is the, uh, the greatest I mean, uh, it's greater. The present value of the tax break is greater this way than in the straight line depreciation, right? If you can understand the concept, then, you know, uh, now, so how do you find, you know, this weight in the old, uh, it's basically like this. Uh, the reason I reversed, the reason I reversed this order, right? from year one through year five, uh, I put it upside down. I reverse the order. That way, um, I will get, I can have most weight allocated to the first year. So what I do is basically I will, you know, um, use this as the uh, numerator and B10 is the denominator. So then if you do that, you drag it down, you get this rate. And in the old days, you know, um, I mean, if something like one through five, it, you can easily do it mentally even. You can even mentally do it. But if it is like, you know, uh, uh, 360, uh, 360 months, let's say, you know, uh, uh, one through 360, that's not, that's not easy to uh, find what is the, um, you know, sum of one through 360. And this was what they did uh, in the old days to find the sum. But you know, we don't we don't need that because the uh, Excel automatically sums up everything. So let's take a look at you know uh, this is not a full example. It's just you know depreciation, annual depreciation only. Uh, so. Uh, okay, let's do this example. Oh, well, this is not complete, so let me do this. Um, This depreciation expense or annual depreciation, and then to have something like that, what do you need um, to have depreciation schedule? What more do you need? You need uh, two more columns, right? Isn't it right? Um, first, accumulated depreciation, right? That this is, you know, uh, uh, I don't, as I always say, you know, it should be sharp. You know, labels shouldn't be, you know, uh, 
labels shouldn't be verbous, right? Labels shouldn't be verbal, verbous, right? It shouldn't be wordy. Just, you know, uh, terse and even this, I wouldn't even, you know, uh, like to uh, make it just depreciation expense. And this, what I did here was, you know, I can just, you know, copy it to the right. And then using, using this, I can, you know, uh, sort descending. Of course, you'll have to put a, a you will have to put a space, uh, one, one column apart, because if you uh, have them together, uh, side by side, when you reverse it, when you uh, uh, sort it descending, then everything else also sorts this, uh, this in descending order. So you, you got to put a uh, space between two. So uh, this needs to be there. This is book value, right? Book value. Now, yellow highlight is for the uh, only for primary solution, and yeah, this is primary solution. Even the depreciation, uh, annual depreciation expense, uh, primary solution. So here, um, all you need to do is you, you'll sum, right? Uh, sum that, and we have it. And then the rate will be then, uh, okay, this divided by B21, and then I will uh, lock. Lock B21 and uh, two decimals, right? And drag it down. Of course, here, you know, um, uh, then depreciation expense is obviously, oh, uh, uh, it would be better. I mean, you know, uh, uh, we don't we don't necessarily need it, but if we have uh, also depreciation base, it will be nice. Which is you know, uh, again, uh, I'll. I'll change this to uh, like 300 because $3,000 salvage value. I mean, for salvage value, that's $3,000. That's a lot. I mean, uh, for $18,000 asset, uh, it's like a used car, $18,000, just just like a used car. And what? how much would be the salvage value of a used car if it is, you know, fully depreciated? 300 is even a lot. So that way, depreciation base is this. Then all I need to do is uh, depreciation base times the rate. But then, you know, I will lock this because, you know, uh, depreciation, it's always the depreciation base times the end. And then and I'll drag it down. Uh, so how do you know when to make this kind of grid? What would the question say? What do you mean? What? what? Because the certain grids that you do, like for, um, for certain questions, I'm, I'm just trying to know the key words to use, like to find a base. Oh, if if the problem is asking for depreciation schedule because what I'm doing is the depreciation schedule okay right that helps a if lot it is, yeah yeah if it is asking for depreciation schedule we will have to build depreciation schedule 
Um, if the problem isn't asking for depreciation schedule, but you know what's the depre annual depreciation under these conditions, you know, uh, then you can answer only. But you know, if you're building anyway, if you're doing all the way to this, why not build a full schedule, right? Why not build a full schedule? It doesn't hurt to build a full, you know, schedule. It, it looks better, right? The first year only that, and the second year, and it's you know. Think about it. I, in in your homework, you may have encountered, you know, uh, if you've been doing it all okay, then you probably didn't encounter this. But I emphasize, you know, uniform and consistency, right? That's what the system means, no? It needs to be done in a uniform, I mean, think about it, uh, and systematic, uniform and consistent, you know, way. Um, the reason we can use, you know, uh, uh, MTA or, you know, um, NJ Transit or easily is because they have uniform and consistent system. Right? Think about it. If, if each station has each, you know, uh, subway line, you know, A and C and E have all different system. Uh, one and two and three have all different system, um, different payment method, different, you know, uh, um, that's what I don't want. You understand? If it is like that, how confusing and how everything is just ad hoc. Everything is just random and ad hoc. Now, we are, we are you know, uh, we have... Uh, we have convenient life, convenient commute, because they all have uniform system. I mean, you can switch from, you can transfer from subway to a uh, bus because they all share the same metro car. And also even between, you know, path train and the uh, uh, MTA subway, the same metro car, you can ride, you know, uh, you can transfer from MTA to a, uh, path train or path train to, from path train to empty because we have uniform and uh, you know consistent uh, payment system if they are not integrated so we want it to be integrated to have you know to have things to have all these you know everything scattered to be integrated you have to put them in one place and have make them follow the same rule uniform rule uniform structure uniform system uniform and consistent that's the idea behind it and if you've been doing my homeworks then you've been getting you know uh, you've been doing it okay uh and you might wonder i got 70 something i mean did i am i not i've been telling you it's statistics it's statistics, and if the mean is if the mean is 40, and you got 70 something, you did very well. And there are people who are people that are not even getting 20, and the, the people who are doing really bad, why? They don't follow any of those. They have no integrated system that is uniform and consistent. They are doing every problem they do. They are all different. It's you know. Arbitrary, one at a time, arbitrary. That's the main cause of their bad performance. And they still don't realize that. So, um, again, it's the uh, integrated system that is uniform and uh, consistent, right? Structurally uniform. And so if you are doing the problem anyway, do it, you know, this way. Give it full, you know, um, even if it is, um, if, you, if you have to give, you know, uh, like this, you know, uh, annual depreciation amount, I mean, you've come this far. Why not, you know, complete the uh, schedule, right?
And then, uh, there you go. And then, book value is always cost minus accumulated depreciation. And I drag it down, yes, and arrived at salvage value, right? So this is complete, okay? It checks out what we did. Uh, that's really, you know, uh, correct. Uh, so this is, you know, uh, accelerated. And then also we have um, uh, some of the digits method, some of the digits. And I told you, some of the digits method, they say some of the years digit, but it's also called rule of 78. Why? Uh, what is rule of 78? Try this. Uh, Uh oh. Okay, twelve, right? If you sum one through twelve, what do you think it's going to be? Seventy eight. Then what does this mean? Um, you remember what, uh, you remember the uh, um, amortization? In amortization, basically, you know, uh, amortization is basically, uh, you know, uh, paying down the loan uh, using compound interest rate. And you understand that early on, it's mostly interest. And as time goes by, uh, interest, rate, interest rate portion gets smaller and smaller. Uh, from the payment, right? And in the payment, then principal, uh, principal paid, principal paid, the portion of the principal paid gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, now we can do, uh, uh, now we can do that easily, right? Now we can do, uh, uh, because we have, you know, uh, Excel, we have cal financial calculators and using, you know, uh, 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 basically, you know, uh, using, you know, uh, compound interest rate, I mean, you know, present value of annuities formula, you can easily, you know, uh, find monthly payment and you can break it down into a uh, interest and pay, uh, principal paid easily. But so we can handle uh, like compound interest rate where M is 12 or whatever, 365. But in the ancient times, when I say ancient times, that's of course Greek and Roman, Egyptian, right? Because Egyptian, Greek and Roman times, they still, they still amortized something, you know, in a way that's similar to uh, uh, to the uh, amortization schedule that we now use. But then you might wonder, how did they understand the concept of compound interest rate in those days? Did they? They may have understood because, you know, Greek, Greeks were basically, they all, you know, uh, uh, very good with math. I mean, they all developed all those math, you know, uh, mathematical uh, concepts, uh, you know, uh, Pythagorean theorem and, but in terms of calculation, could they, was it, for them, is it easy to calculate something like, you know, 1.05 raised to 12? Was it easy? For, no, of course not. It obviously wasn't easy for them to uh, do these, you know, uh, compoundings, right? But instead, uh, even the, uh, 
simple in, with even the simple interest rate, they could they could break it down like you know um, in a decaying pattern, right? The principal going down in a decaying pattern. Um, interest, you know, uh, more interest early on, and you know, interest getting smaller and smaller as time goes on. They could break they could break it down. They they could break down the uh, monthly payments into a uh, something like that. How? By, think about it, if you use, okay, this is 72, we all know, and then let's say, Oh, we are almost out of time, so I'm not going to do, uh, okay. Uh, if we if we stack it up like that, and then we can we can find the weight exactly that way, right? And monthly we can break down monthly um, we can break down monthly um, uh, payment into a uh, was someone trying to say something? Okay. We can break it down like this, and then think about it. We can apply that, you know, by this weight, right? We can we can break monthly. Um, so in other words, that's why it is called rule of seventy-eight. Okay, that's why it's called rule of seventy-eight. Uh, now, so there is a partial year um, depreciation, and we we need to make adjustment for partial year and partial year for. Um, Partial year for partial year adjustment for uh, uh, the rule of 78 or some of the digits method is really uh, messy. I mean, it's not it's not you know uh, 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 undoable. It's just uh, more tedious. Okay, so let me. Uh, I have a question. Hello? Yeah. If, yeah, yeah. If a cost is 20000 a salvage value is 2000 that gives you eighteen for the um, BV. Depreciation base. Yes. Yeah, but my thing is, how is how is that, how you're supposed to get 2000 If you subtract 20000 from 2000 you get, I mean, if you subtract 20000 from 18000 your first um, year, you're going to get 2000 What? 18,000, uh, you're talking about the straight line? Yeah. Are you talking about the straight line? Yeah. 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 So depreciation base is 18,000, right? Yeah. And then what's the service life? 2,000. The service life? 2,000. No, no, no. Service life. What's the service life? It's 2,000. And, and the problem is 2,000. What do you mean 2,000? What do you mean 2,000? 2,000 Two years. Service life is 2,000 years? It says, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's three, 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 three. I'm sorry. Three years. Yes. Then look, then 18,000 is the depreciation base in the first, and it's a straight line depreciation. So, so every year it's going to be 33.33. Yes, that's correct. But now, then what's the question then? My question is in the beginning value, I followed the, the formula that you gave. It will be, it will be the course subtract be quiet. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. It will be the what? cost subtract um for C six subtract the cumulative depreciation and it gave me two thousand, but that's the savage value. You're supposed to get two thousand. No 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 no. Ah, um, if you subtract, look, that's that. Ah, okay. Let's do it this way. This so you said you know uh, twenty thousand, right? Yes, twenty thousand. The savage value is two thousand. The sales life, value is 2000 life three life, years mm -hmm. amount is 18. And then, yeah 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 you know uh, uh depreciation base is 18 not the amount yes yeah, depreciation sorry. base is 18. this All is right. annual annual depreciation amount annual right yeah so the you know the uh, schedule is already built uh, in the first year Mm -hmm. What is 18? I, you keep saying 18 is depreciation base. Okay? So put that under annual? 
What? You wouldn't put that under the annual? You wouldn't start with that? No. Why would you start with annual means annually six? How can annually it can be 18,000? See, that's the thing. We learned so much. Look, look, be, be, be reasonable. Be logical. Okay. If the label, label says annual depreciation, right? Uh-huh. Label says annual depreciation, and if you put 18,000 there, you are either, you know, you are lying or you are just inconsistent. How can 18,000 be annual depreciation? You follow, you have to give what the label says. Don't you think? Well, that's the problem. I don't know which grid to use sometimes for each problem because we learn multiple. So reading the questions, it don't really ask what is annual, what is the base. It just asks create a grid or it, it says uh, create a schedule. So I'm trying to get the key yeah, words yeah, yeah. to know which grid No, to no, use. no. You, I've been showing you. I've been showing you all this time. Well, you follow you exactly what I do. And you quiet. All you need to do is just, you know, emulate what I do. Isn't that, for example, um, so, okay, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you can put, you know, depreciation base here, right, sometimes. Uh, and the depreciation base is, of course, you know, um, this minus uh, this minus this. Okay, and then here you don't. I I found I did depreciation base here, but if the depreciation base is already here, you don't have to do that. You'll just simply that divided by the rate. Okay, but either way, uh, the schedule depreciation schedule. Um, you don't. It says annual depreciation, then you gotta put annual depreciation. The label says annual depreciation. Okay? Or in the homework, it does it, it doesn't say annual. It doesn't say it just says straight line depreciation. And then it also says what would the depreciation expense begin the first year if February third. So Hold it's kind of confusing on which grid to use sometimes as far as doing homework. Mm -hmm. Like the right. oh, Okay, fine. hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let me, what what homework problem are you talking about? Let me I take a look. I started all over. I started from hold on, hold. homework five. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to go there. Okay, so okay. give me time. I'm trying to go to the uh, uh, homework see. five screen okay, shot. Give me this. Okay, uh, so which one are you talking the about? The first one. This one? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's nothing. Uh, look, using straight line depreciation for the following, okay? Uh, I don't know what you're looking Are you looking at something like this? Ignore this. This is stupid, right? This is sloppy. Ignore that. Why? Because it's it's redundant. I, I think, I, I, think uh, I understand what you're talking about. Uh, but that is, I'm not showing you that. I'm not doing that. But, you know, uh, if you want, in other words, uh, I built that schedule already here. I mean, this is, but if you want to do it like that, um, what you can do is, um, you just add one more column. And look, this is then book value at the beginning, right? If this is just book value at the beginning, it doesn't uh, book value at beginning. This is book value at the end. But the book value at the beginning, uh, book value at the beginning doesn't mean anything. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. Um, it's not. So it's not necessary. But if you want, here, book value at the beginning is this. And then book value at the beginning of the year two is this. 
book value at the beginning of year three is this. Isn't that right? In other words, uh, I don't even have to. I mean, all this time, all this time, you are not even, you know, um, you cannot even, you know, be sure about what is important and what is not important, what is relevant and what is not, you know, relevant. You cannot be sure about that. I mean, think about it. What is, what is this, you know, is it really necessary uh, for some, uh, Okay. Okay. So that's not the Everyone. issue. We, we are, I'm, I'm literally doing it where, like, how you're doing it on YouTube. I'm doing it just like that. But you've done so many examples to where mm -hmm. it's confusing to know which grid we're using based off of the questions. So it's not about picking out what's realistic or not. It makes total sense. The formulas makes total sense. It's just what grid am I using to find the answer? Because you well, showed so many. I've been sure. Look. This is, this is straight line. This is straight line, right? I was talking about, but now I'm into accelerated depreciation, right? B before the break, it was straight line. So if the problem is about straight line, it, the problem says, you know, uh, uh, which one to, the problem says, you know, which one to use, either, you know, uh, use straight line depreciation or, uh, you know, double declining, you know, a declining balance method or whatever its problem tells you. And as I said, you know, um, the reason I'm not using this column, book value at the beginning, this is totally useless for straight line depreciation because it doesn't add any new information. It doesn't add any new information. If you want to do that, that's fine, but at least be consistent, right? And then, uh, The, again, um, uh, so let's take a look at. Uh, Thank you, Professor. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. So anyway, uh, if the truck were bought on February 3rd, now that's, you know, then this is partial year depreciation, right? This is a uh, full year depreciation. And number two is partial year, right? What would be the depreciation? I talked about the partial year, right? Depreciation with partial year. And then think about it. In uh, Do it like, um, I will copy this. If you're doing a partial year, right? Um, and, uh, And uh, it said February, right? February 3rd, was it? Yeah. I did, I did, you know, a partial year example. So uh, all you need to do is, so uh, depreciation expense in the first year. All you need to do is make this February 3rd and uh, okay and then applying that to the first year uh, okay what is today it's strong you have February 3rd Okay, this, this date was, you know, uh, this, this thing is, you know, uh, very slow, but you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, then, uh, this is really not necessary, as I said, you know, but, you know, leave it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, book value at the beginning is always like, uh, just here, you make that adjustment. Simply, uh, uh, 
I just give you an example of, you know, a partial year adjustment, uh, partial year depreciation. And then in the final, in the last year, in the last year, what was missing in the first year, you make that adjustment in the last year. Think about it. So you, um, one one month that you uh, you didn't have, one month that you didn't have in the first year, will be compensated in the last year, right? So think about it. In the first year, you had you had the asset for like 0 0.919 year. So then 0 0.1 year will be added back there in the. Uh, in the last year. And if you do that, you end up exactly with the same salvage value. But again, over and over, what is this doing here? I mean, is it any is there any meaning to that? Is it is it necessary? It's just there, like you know, for declining balance method, it it has a job. It has a job for declining balance method, but for you know uh uh, straight line method, it has no function, right? This doesn't have any function. So, um, as I said, you know, uh, you don't have to really uh, bother with that. You can you can do it just like this. Okay. All right. So I think. I, I try to cover all the way to the declining balance method, but you know, uh, um, that wasn't possible. You know, that was. Um, so I think you know, uh, 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 that's all the time we have. But, you know, so uh, just you know, uh, if you. Uh, let me take your question if you have any. Yeah, I have a question. Um, do you think yeah. that it's possible for us to send the last homework um, by tomorrow as soon as possible? Because we no, have no, time no. today and... Um, I know, I know, I understand. I can, look, uh, if you send it by like, you know, 6 a.m. tomorrow, I mean, anyway, uh, I don't know, I, I won't be able to sleep tonight or for many nights because I will finish, I will have to finish grading and I have to... Uh, uh, I have only 48 hour, 48 hour window to uh, a report grade. That means, you know, after today, I have only, uh, you know, 48 hours. So I won't be able to, uh, but you know, I will have to sleep at some point. Um, and if you if you send it, as I said, since this is the last homework, if you send it after today, <laughs> there's, I can't meet that. 48 hour deadline. Okay. So, so let's see. Anyway, I, I will be still grading homework four. Anyway, tonight, I will still be grading homework four. I won't be able to get to homework five anyway. So if you send it by like, you know, uh, uh, 6 a.m., 6 a.m. tomorrow, then I'll accept it. Okay. okay. But okay. anything after that, I, I don't have time to grade, right? If you if you send it like you know uh, 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 like 11:59 tomorrow, there is no time for me to grade it, right? I have to submit the uh, grade by 11:59 Tuesday, right? So all these you know logistically logistically please think about logistics logistically there is no um, uh, uh, it's not doable, and of course I've been pushing it. Uh, but that you know, logistically, uh, some or two, five weeks, some or two, uh, that's a logistical. Um, uh, you know, uh, always it's been a logistical challenge. It's, uh, yeah. So that's it. You know. Relax. Yeah. Relax. Oh, were you, are you speaking to me? Uh, okay, so uh, 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 I answered your question about you know uh, uh, how how far the deadline can be extended, right? Uh, 
Yeah, thank you. I think all right. Good. All right. You're welcome. And uh, any other questions? Any other questions? All right. If you don't have any further questions, then that's it for today. And that, that's it for this semester. Uh, uh, good luck with your final if you haven't yet completed it. And uh, good luck with your homework five. Okay. All righty. Take Thank care, you. everyone. Bye, All right. All right. All right. Have a great uh, rest of the summer. All right. Take care, everyone. All right. Stop Thank recording. Thank you, Professor. All right.